So it is going into day two with Eric Bieniemy visiting the Washington Commanders headquarters and Ron Rivera and interviewing with them. It seems like it's going pretty well. Um, usually when the Washington Commanders are really going after their top candidate, they roll out the red carpet. There's usually dinner involved, which there was with Eric Bieniemy. You didn't hear about any of this with any of the other candidates. Not saying it didn't happen, but just that we're hearing about all this with uh, Bieniemy. You know, they did the the dinner the night before the interview. Uh, they interviewed him yesterday. They let him tour the facilities. And it seems like they're going into kind of a day two thing with them, or maybe if you count the dinner the night before, it's the day three thing with uh, Eric Bieniemy. Folks, we will probably know by the end of today who our next offensive coordinator is going to be. <laughs> Honestly, it's kind of hilarious that we are going through all of this just to find out who a position coach is going to be. Now, I, I, I'm trying not to minimize the importance of an offensive coordinator. Obviously, obviously, uh, an offensive coordinator is extremely important for the success of a football team. So I'm, I'm trying not to minimize that, but it's just I, I find it a little hilarious that it's kind of like rolling out the red carpet. You know, you, you usually tend to understand this when you're trying to hire a head coach, but this shows you how much, how well respected that Eric Bieniemy is and how much that they really want him. Which again, if you watch my video from yesterday, it, it's funny how Eric Bieniemy is completely not the philosophy that the Washington Commanders were talking about wanting to implement with their offense, you know, which is a two to one ratio of run pass. Eric Bieniemy is not a two to one ratio of run to pass. He is the exact opposite. As a matter of fact, Eric Bieniemy has not had a thousand yard rusher within his offenses. So if he comes to Washington, it's likely to to be the same. Now, we do have Brian Robinson who is emerging, and it could be something where it's. Uh, I will say I, I take it back. Maybe Kareem Hunt. I'd have to go back and look. Cream Hunt may have been the last one to have reached 1,000 yards for the Kansas City Chiefs. So maybe Brian Robinson Jr. is the next Cream Hunt. Maybe he reaches that 1,000 yards. But, you know, obviously Robinson split in time with Antonio Gibson. That may not be as likely, possibly. But anyway, it's just, I find it hilarious. I, I really do. But anyway... You know, conversing with some of the fans about this, obviously some of the Kansas City fans are saying, why is it that we're trying to get rid of Eric Bannemi if he is so valuable to the Chiefs? And some people think it's racially motivated. Other people think that we, you know, Kansas City doesn't need him. The fact that he can't get along with some players, allegedly, I mean... You know, the reasons are all across the board. And then there's the questions of why would he want to leave Kansas City to make a lateral move to Washington, especially with an uncertain situation with the ownership? And those are all valid questions to ask. You know, for me personally, I'm kind of like, hey, I think he is the top candidate. Bring him in. I think he would be a slam dunk higher for the Washington Commanders. But yeah, it there are some red flags. Like, why is Kansas City so willing to get rid of them? You know, it's kind of... I remember back when Andy Reid was willing to part ways with Donovan McNabb. I know we're talking about a quarterback and not an offensive coordinator. But, you know, we were kind of like, wow, I can't believe that Andy Reid is so willing to get rid of Donovan McNabb, who has been his quarterback for all those years, had all the success, and he's not only willing to give him up, but he's willing to give him up to a NFC East rival team. 
And it was because that, well, you know, McNabb was past his prime at that time. And I'm not saying that EB is necessarily past his prime in coaching. I ain't saying that at all. I'm just saying that, why? You know, Andy Reid doesn't become a Super Bowl head coach, you know, over nothing, right? There, There's a method to his madness, so... It would make a lot more sense if Andy Reid is giving EB up because he needs to go out and find a head coaching position, which I think he's probably long overdue for that as well. So a a lot of mystery surrounding this, but I think overall I still think think it's a slam dunk over the other offensive coordinators that we would have to choose from at this point. They don't, they're not sexy hires, obviously. Um, they're not, uh, they're not anybody that I think that you would look to see, wow, they're going to get this offense scoring 30 plus points a ball game, especially Roman. I think Roman was probably the second offensive coordinator, the second favorite. And now, he really aligns more within the philosophy that Ron Rivera and company are looking for. You know, the run first, the two-to-one ratio, but you're not going to score that many points. And I think Washington, if they're going to keep up with high-powered offenses within their division, you know, Philadelphia Eagles, uh, Dallas Cowboys, I mean, the Giants... You know, they had a good team. So Washington's got a stout defense, but they're they're gonna have to have a good offense to match, which means they've got to score some points. So it can't be this nineteen eighties ball controlled offense. Trust me, I love I love good ball controlled offense, but I also love scoring some points. And I think that Ron Rivera understands he's gotta score some points, which is the reason why they're courting Eric Bienemy so much. And you know, on top of all this, we're also talking about the change in ownership. And if we're talking about the change in ownership, supposedly this is going to happen in March. We still, you know, it's weird when we don't hear a word for like several weeks and then all of a sudden, oh yes, it's going to happen and then we don't hear anything for a while. You really feel like it's going to start ramping up. Um, you're going to start hearing some names drop. But we also started hearing that a lot of names had dropped out just because it seems like that Dan Snyder is trying to play hardball in terms of what he wants. Like, he doesn't want anything under $7 billion for the team. And so bidders are like, forget that. If I've got to build a stadium, I'm not going to give you more than $7 billion. And that's what a lot of these bidders are saying and i'm not sure in this case who has the leverage because technically dan snyder doesn't have to sell the team he could hold on to the team but he's probably going to continue to be an embattled owner fans are going to continue to hate him they're going to continue to struggle to have attendance at football games which means they're going to continue to lose money and that's not good for the franchise. That's not a good look for the NFL. It's really not a good look for the NFL to keep him in as owner. And I'm not sure if Roger Goodell really cares. I mean, honestly, he f- I feel like that he has made the minimum progress or, or you know advancement to try to get him out. I mean, I don't know what it is, you know, but... Roger Goodell, for one reason or the other, loves having Dan Snyder as an owner. Don't know. Don't understand it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we all hope that he sells. We still feel like it's a 100% sure thing that's going to be done in March. But we have yet to really hear who is actually going to who's going to be the winning bidder. Right now, we're saying Jeff Bezos because he has, he's got the most money, and he says that he's interested, but he hasn't put a bid down yet. So, folks, this may carry on. And I, honestly, at this point, 
it probably wouldn't matter if it carried on past March because you're not going to see much of a change in coaching at this point anyway. You, new ownership would be dumb to make a coaching change in March. Really would. Uh, who, who are you going to put in at that point? They're not going to be prepared. So, you know, if it doesn't happen until later on, you know, in the year, maybe that's what it takes to get the right ownership in. I hate that. I want it done. All of the Washington Commanders fans, they want it done. They want it done yesterday. But maybe we have to be patient to make sure that we get the right ownership in and we're not just putting a, you know, substituting one bad billionaire in for another. Um, it's kind of like what we've done with coaching <laughs> over the years. You know, we put this guy in for a few years. He doesn't really produce anything, so it's like rinse and repeat. Uh, we got to get off that merry, merry-go-round, right? That, that carousel that we just keep getting on all the time. So, folks, I guess with that, we just have to be patient. And, but at least I think the news that we will ha- see today is we'll probably likely we'll see a new offensive coordinator. It's probably going to be Eric Bieniemy, which means that <clears throat> me saying that it's going to be somebody completely different. Folks, if you enjoyed this channel, please support it by subscribing. And uh, thank you for all your support. Uh, if you like this video, uh, like it, comment. Uh, helps the algorithm, helps to get this video out to the masses, uh, share it with your buddies. Um, also, you can support this channel uh, by going to my Envy Artwork Etsy shop. I've got all sorts of great things on this shop. Um, I've got uh, Washington Commanders mugs. I've got NFL bander, banners, uh, excuse me, uh, you know, Redskins, uh, Cowboys, um, Outside the NFC East, too, I got Cincinnati Bengals. I also have the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs, if you want to check that out. Uh, Red Bulls, because why not? Um, alternate logo of con- the Commanders. I even got shirts for Red Hogs, because, again, you never know. Uh, uh, I got concert t-shirts that are concept art. I've got stuff for the youth. I've got awesome... Uh, wall art that you got to take you you just got to look at it man i mean this stuff can go into um offices game rooms um bedrooms whatever i mean just i've got a little something for everybody and if you see something um in the store and you're like hey you know what this is great but why can't you also can you do this for me hit me up message me i'll see if i can make it happen for you and I'll put my Etsy store. So anyway, check it out. It's um, Envy Artwork um, at Etsy. So take care, folks. I'll see you in the next one. Hey, you stayed until the very end. Thank you so much. Watch another one right now.